Behind the Counter is sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Sign up for a new account and get your domain name for only $249 by using promo code Queens at checkout. Hello and welcome once again to another amazing episode of Behind the Counter, your one-stop shop for everything comic book, pop culture, and awesome related. Uh, I'm your host, Rich Stambolian, and with me, as always, is America's hottest young porn starlet, Jonathan Adler. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> know about it. You can see him at the uh, the uh, AVN Awards. At the AVN Awards. At I'll the, be hosting. Uh, at the Brick in My Mouth booth. <laughs> <laughs> I make uh, I make a dull film. <laughs> and I'm hot to trot. Do you have a Do you have a show on the network about adult film? Yeah, Hot Dog Highway. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. That answered my question. Uh, what is up? I don't know, man. Happy New Year. 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 You can't say it after tomorrow. It's nine days, and then that's it. I can do whatever you want. I made that nine. Up. I'm putting white pants on everything. Yeah, and saying white New shoes. Year. White shoes, white shirt. I'm gonna go through. What the is it? You can't wear white pants after Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what they say. Bray Wyatt, twenty four seven, white pants. I, I feel like he lives in Miami. That show's over, guys. I know. I can't do that. Can't talk that about. That was my rest. original. My original rule is we can't do that. We can't have bleeding of the shows. Nah. Sorry, he can't. We we could. I feel like if our bladders could be in control, we could segue from one show to the other. Yeah, you know. Oh, we could just go right into it. Right, right yeah. into it. But we just, like, we start wearing diapers. Play the theme. A good. Uh, this is actually a toilet I'm sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> a good five minutes before Matt Men's over, I'm like, Ooh. I was, I, I was having a freak out. Like I was having like weird, like I just, I, I'm I just wearing know. diapers. And you like kept on going on. I'm like, I need to really, like, I can't focus anymore. You know when I had that freak out when we interviewed DDP. Really? Cause, oh god! Because yeah, he went for so long, and I was like, "Why did I drink all that coffee?" <laughs> yeah, I had the coffee before, and that really it goes through me. Mm. Um, happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Um, hit me. What do you got? Uh, it was Image Expo today. <laughs> <laughs> You're like uh, an '80s like pitch man. Like, all right, yeah. what's your idea? Hit me. What's your idea? Shark Tank, comic okay, book, shark- comic book <laughs> style. So you got a small boy mm-hmm. so living, <laughs> living inside of an alligator. So old. And that's all you need, baby. Is it called Saligator the Alligator? Saligator, yes. <laughs> Sold. The young Jewish Here's a million dollars. <laughs> wow. All right. Give me a new image number one. Image Expo. Let's do this. Uh, no, there's a, there's a <laughs> bunch of new uh, announcements coming on. Uh, Brew Baker's doing a new book with them. He's signing a contract with them. Uh, with Sean Phillips. Uh, they'll be doing something, you know, sleeper or criminal-esque. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Grant Morrison's doing another book. He's going to do it with uh, Chris Burnham. Love which it. We love Chris Burnham. Um, because he burns them. Batman Incorporated. Batman Incorporated. Um, something else too. Oh, big shift in Invincible. Something big is gonna happen. In like their hundred tenth, hundred tenth issue. Yeah, where basically they're saying like it's like if the Robert Kirkman from Walking Dead decide to start writing, you know, Invincible. It makes sense. As Robert Kirk. As Robert Kirk. <laughs> Two sides of Robert Kirk. He in- Invincible is gonna mm-hmm. be Robert Kirk. Mm-hmm. This is my book. There's a there's a there's a fat Robert Kirkman joke that I came up with the other day. It was really I really enjoy the guy's work, but like sometimes a little screw this microphone by the way. <laughs> uh, something no, I just like <laughs> smacked it out of control. Um this is a very nice microphone, Andrew. I appreciate it. I appreciate the microphone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um so uh <laughs> it was a little mean. I, I was like in my head, uh I was reading the, the Last Walking Dead and I was like, ah, oh, cool, you know, but I'm reading all the stuff and I'm like, Blobbert Kirkman. <laughs> Blobbert Kirkman. <laughs> Which I've never heard before. And I feel like maybe in some forum somewhere, some guy is just like, <laughs> there was some, uh, I, I don't read the Larry's I don't mean anymore. it, but yeah, but still, yeah. it's still good. It's still a good bit. Mm-hmm. Blobbert Kirkman is very good. I would like us to go to Comic Con one year and actually call him Blobbert Kirkman <laughs> and say it's like a flub. That could be your character. Like you could show up as. Blah, 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 blah. I, wear, I write a book called The Working Dead. The Working Dead. <laughs> Everybody comes back from the I dead make, and they got to get jobs. I make heroes in a deli. <laughs> the Working Dead. I write a book called, uh, you know, Kind of Strong. Kind of Invincible. Kind of Strong. Kind of Strong. He's a tough guy. Tough guy. <laughs> tough guy. <laughs> tough guy. Tough guy number one by Image Comics. And his dad, tough man. I took your uh, advice. I read Stranded. I, I picked up all six issues. and Sheltered. Uh, sheltered. There's another book stranded also, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that the one about the rapture happens and then everyone's left on Earth? No. Wait, I don't know. 
I don't know. I really don't know. I don't uh, know anymore. I don't know. That's how many comic books came out last year. I, I don't know what I'm reading anymore. Shelter's the one that you, you recommend. Shelter's the one about the po- like the kids. Awful uh, kids. The awful kids murder <laughs> their parents. And, and like they're all doomsday preppers. Right. They're preparing for the stupid volcano. Did you read all of them? I loved it. I, I didn't read the I, one that came out yesterday. It was very good. But uh, like, how tense is that book? It's pretty... Like, I, I, I read them all in one hit, so like the the tension level like very much carried over through all of them. Yeah, it's a very good story. Um, did they say how long it's going for? Is it an ongoing or is it just going to be like a twelve I'm not issue sure. thing? Again, I don't know what I'm reading anymore. So like stuff ends, and I'm like, oh, I guess it was a miniseries. Yeah, it's tough for me. Like I was saying to you the other day, it's very tough for me to pick up new issues because it really shows up as a name or a cover that I don't know anything about. Right. Um, Are we over the hill? Are we over the hill, comic fans? Yeah, I, I am. I like. <laughs> I look. I'm like, is there is there a Green Arrow book out today? Mm, all right, that's all I need. That Spider Man book is out again. Are you gonna Are you gonna fire us to make way for the new comic book guys? The, the new comic book guys. Yeah. yeah. Who are they? I don't know. Blobber Kirk. I'm asking you. Blobber Kirk. <laughs> blob life. Blob life. Blob life. <laughs> comic blobs. Listen, NYCC 2014. That could be like our cosplay comic of just blobs. like fat creators. <laughs> like we'll just pretend we'll be like, oh, like, I'm gonna put you in your book. Like we're Stan Lee or like a fat Stan Lee. We gotta come up with a good name for that. Like fat Stan Lee. Fat Stan Lee. Uh, uh, Stunley. Excelsior. <laughs> Stunley. <laughs> that would be uh. uh Honestly, and like this, I'm trying. I don't want this to sound racist at all, but I, I would love Stanley to be an Asian Stanley. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think I'm the real Stanley. I think Stanley's still trying to get Stripple- Stripperella to work. Oh, he is. Mm-hmm. He but, just put out. He just put out a, uh, I think a show recently called Stripperella, something like that, or some other thing that's like a complete garbage idea. What happened. happened with that? Like he was really behind that. He's behind a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's he's doing like a lot of stuff, and it's anyway make a so, lot of money. We're, this is like this is like the weird thing that we fall into because like we're both like you know there's so much to read and today we're gonna do our uh, best of 2013 we're gonna punch that list up for you guys who are watching um soon but like there's so much like stuff it's hard to keep up with if you are an adult and you got like stuff to do and you got bills to pay it's kind of hard to be like you know what I'm gonna read everything 38 books come out every day <laughs> which ones do I read well, I draw most of DC that's what I'm saying like DC yeah. has made it much easier to be a comic book fan because I, it yeah. really uh, when I look at the list it's mostly Marvel and Image mm-hmm. I'm really looking at uh, DC I'm looking for uh, what three books maybe Superman yeah. <laughs> you're looking for Batman looking for Batman all um, the Batman books all the Batman books uh, I, you know what I, I dropped Detective and I repicked it up I checked out did you read Detective 27 I read half of it and- uh all right, so did you read the the Gothitopia preview? That's thing? the one I didn't read. All right, so Gothitopia, like it's a, it's it's the uh, new crossover happening where you'll you'll see it's like a different it's an alternate reality where like okay. Batman wears like white armor, right. and his his partner is uh, Catwoman. Catwoman as Robin. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm like, this is the last thing I read before I went to bed last night. I'm looking at it. She, and, you know, she's wearing like, the Catwoman outfit, uh-huh. but she has like on her torso the red and yellow and green. So I'm like, what is she gonna be called? Like Catbird? And like, sure enough, I turned the page, and her name was Catbird. Oh yeah, <laughs> love it. Love it. Were you like, thank you, thank I you, DC. It. I can be doing this. Give it the LL. Gothitopia. Um, <laughs> they made very easy. Marvel's writing a lot of stuff that I read. Yeah, a lot of the new number ones came out this week. I know. Like which one? Uh, X Factor. Uh, a weird book. That was good. I liked it. It was really book. good. I like a. Uh, I like how on me. I like how Peter <laughs> David writes game because he's like, you know what? I really don't gotta make it any more than oh, Mon Ami. Give yeah. me your wallet, Mon Ami. But, and, but it and it fits with this, you know, with the little team that we have now. Mm. You know, just Polaris, Quicksilver, and, and Gambit, right? And the the whatever the the, the business people, right? And the, the business people, people. people. Yeah, it was it was a good dynamic. Yeah, the Fatal in there who's yeah. gonna be part of the team yeah. and. Um, who else? Because there's there's two people on the cover, I, and Quicksilver. I, there's two people on the cover that I didn't really um, know who they were. I don't remember. And I feel like one of them is going to be Machine Man, but I might be wrong. And the other one was wearing a hood and had like a smile underneath it. Uh, that's going to be uh, Maggot. It's going to be... Oh, I like Maggot. <laughs> Hot Dog Man. Hot Dog Man. Um, that came out. Avengers World, I think, came out, right? I liked it. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't feeling it. Uh. I think because I'm a sucker for all those characters now, like because mm-hmm. it it looks like a book that's gonna be focusing on the like the B level guys of like yeah. the big Avengers team. You had like Cannonball and Smasher and Sunspot and that's fine. And what, what was and like they, 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 a lot of AIM stuff this year. Starbrand, like, Starbrand, Night Mask. I think AIM is gonna be the big yeah thing for like the going but forward with the Avengers. AIM's universe. been a big a big thing in uh in like Secret Avengers since it, yeah since uh what's his name came on. 
that guy. Brubaker. The other guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else came out this week that was pretty damn good? Uh, the 10th of Comics number 27 was, was kind of interesting. The anthology uh, was, was, was kind of nice. It was a nice touch. Yeah, I was very happy there wasn't actually any Frank Miller inside the book. Oh, which man. Which is very, very good. I actually picked up the different cover. The, 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 the terrible Catwoman thing? No, no. I picked up the... Um, because there was there's two. There's a Frank Miller Catwoman one, and then there was like just Batman, Batman like, on a roof. Sta- staring at the moon. Okay. I picked that one. Yeah, yeah. I would I would definitely go for that one. Um it was good. I liked the I, like I I didn't read the Goth Tofi stuff, but I enjoyed the anthology. The Neil Adams one was kind of weird. I love the Neil Adams. Uh, but it was good. It was very it was it was very interesting. Well, you never read that Neil Adams crazy stuff that he's still putting out. I halfway read the first uh the which, first miniseries. Which is like, you know, Grant Morrison era, yeah. like, you know, crazy Batman stuff. Yeah. Sex God. Batman. Right. It's what was it? It's him as Bruce Wayne telling him, a story about Batman. Him bat him shirtless Bruce Wayne romancing <laughs> some woman telling his story of like the craziest time of being Batman. Okay. But and that's it. Just trying to get laid. Yeah, like basically. he fights dinosaurs and yeah. goes through time and Race Al Ghoul and mm-hmm. crazy stuff. My favorite bit my favorite part about the the Detective Twenty Seven anthology was the um Scott Snyder. Or was that when he was like really like the super old? Were he seventy five? Seventy fifth birthday? No. Well, he, it's another future one where it's mm-hmm. it's some weirdo story where every twenty seven years they re they create another Batman, mm-hmm. and it was like an old Batman in like a samurai, like an old like kimono and mm-hmm. like missing an arm, talking to like the current era Batman, and them saying through the past like all these other Batmans have existed and it only lasts twenty seven years. Okay, pretty good. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, the it's, other, the last, it's the last one that he it's in the book. Uh, I forgot who wrote it. And drew it. No, no, no. The um, the one with the seventy fifth, seventy fifth anniversary of Batman, good. and you know you have Damien there, and oh, that's uh, a really good one. And too. Alfred, Barbara Gordon, they're all in the cave wishing him a happy birthday. And then there's like an emergency, and he goes out and he starts kicking ass all over the place. Yeah, and he comes back and he's like a he's still an old man. There was another really good one mm-hmm. too, a, a really high action one with a really incredible art that, can't, that escapes me now. Yeah, I think one of the Spanish artists. Did. We're over the hill, man. I know. Can't remember comics. I can't remember names. Can't remember names. Gotta start writing stuff down. You, looking over this year was was very difficult because there was a man. lot of books and like I, you know, we kind, you know, you kind of made the categories for us to mm. to pick from. Uh, Storyline is one that I'm still puzzling over. Like you, okay. like I know what you said and everything, but like I think there were a lot of really cool stuff. And a lot of stuff that didn't happen all at the same time over the course of the year. Especially okay. for Marvel. Marvel had tons of stuff happen. Yeah. You know, like, the the reason I didn't put, um, uh, uh, there's a couple of books where I was like, ooh, this definitely was was up there. But then I realized, like, oh, this was a 2012 book. Like what? Um, I think Hawkeye. It was. I mean, yeah. well, like, when I would have put Hawkeye on my mm-hmm. list higher just because it was so late this year. Yeah. You've got maybe, you know, like seven, eight issues of, of Hawkeye and very, very spread out. Um, Not taking away from the year that it had. The issues that they did put out were amazing. Right, right. Yeah, it was it was a very slow book. I mean, um, were there any major announcements made in Image Expo or no? They're still going through it. Yeah. The biggest thing is like, you know, the, the, like the Ed Brubaker and the Grant Morrison, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Which is which is pretty cool. Um, I did hear that Walking Dead made, what was it, like the, the best-selling comic in 2013? It definitely was, yeah. It's very interesting. Um, let's talk about let's talk about the. I feel like the energy's kind of low. Up. We're old now. We're aging on the show. I feel I feel all right. Yeah, the same way I did on the wrestling show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to talk about uh, Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, talk about Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, <laughs> man, like, what is the deal with this dude, Andrew? Did you hear about this? He's uh, what yeah. is he doing? He's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Well, we know that. Well, he he did a, a short film, and he directly ri- bro, you know ripped off uh, Dan Close. What happened? What happened? What happened? I'm trying to drink and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> While the camera's not on me, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Shoot that man drinking. Uh, so Dan Close, you know, was ripped off by Shia, La- Shia LaBeouf, and mm. and then uh, Shia LaBeouf started apologizing to him very publicly on Twitter. Right, like I got caught up in the moment. Yeah. I did all this stuff. But all of his apologies were plagiarism. And then like every single one of them mm-hmm. were, were plagiarism. And then this guy did an interview with Bleeding Cool. Uh-huh. And it was basically like, oh, you know, what is, what is art? If not just pointing at things, telling them to look at it, you know, mm-hmm. 
everything has been copied, everything's been done. Like he, so he made like mm-hmm. all his bullshit, like half ass apology. Yeah, you know, yeah. he made it into like I'm I'm an artistic asshole. This <laughs> is why I'm doing what I'm doing. But he paid for skywriting for I'm he did wrote in uh, the sky. I'm sorry, Dan Close. Right. Do you think the next step is him holding uh, a boombox over his head, like um, such a moron? I like John Cusack. I don't say anything. But like they say that he's like a total asshole. He seems like you yeah. look at that guy. He's like he's a greasy little <laughs> piece of garbage. You know. You know what it is. I I have a, a feeling that it's it's him and Close working together. And I could be completely wrong about this. Him and Danny Close working together and basically doing kind of like positive. like a performance art piece. Of, Danny Close hasn't said a single thing about this. He's like, all right, great. Well, his lawyer, his lawyer, like they <laughs> they posted the thing from his lawyer, which was just like not even in legal speak. It was like. You stop it, buddy. Hey, stop doing Listen, what I, you're doing. We told you already, you know. But I feel like I feel like, uh, like it's a, it's a it's a weird thing, man. Because like you're in such a place in Hollywood, like you're this uh, art, like uh, famous actor, right? You've done a lot of movies. You're the Transformers guy. You're a millionaire. Um, why would you do this unless it's to get attention, to draw attention to something that's going to happen? I remember a few years ago when Hulk and Phoenix did the whole "I'm a crazy beardy guy" and. Ooh. Uh, Hoyk and Phoenix. Hoyk and Phoenix. Oh. <laughs> River, uh, River Phoenix's the way, brother. The funny um, way to say it. <laughs> when he get, went all beardy and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm a rapper now. And he did the movie. And he didn't did the movie. Yeah. And then he came out to every talk show and was just like, I'm giving up acting. I'm doing this and that. And yeah. it was really uncomfortable interviews. Yeah. They were six months. He won't forgive him. Right, yeah. right. Um, and it was a bit, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He's swiveling, that. man. Uh, and it was a bit. So. I think this is kind of something like that where it's a little meta. It's kind of like a, like a screw you to a lot of different people. No, I think he's making it into that. I oh, think, Shia? I think he's trying to manufacture this mm-hmm. like absolutely, you know, big cock up into a, you know, some type of media thing. Some meta media thing. Okay. I think also the dude's working with Lars Van Trier, like the German filmmaker. And I think he like that, that party <laughs> fartiness like mm-hmm. really rubbed off. It's like, oh, I could be, I could be intelligent. Right. Like he did, um... He did a music video for Marilyn Manson okay. uh, last year, and it's awesome. But the thing is, it's exactly like Holy Mountain. Who, Shia? Yeah. Okay. And it looks exactly like Jodorowsky stuff. It mm-hmm. has like that same type of quality to it. That's like his thing. He's making like a mixtape of like weirdo crap that he's found along the way. <laughs> like, these are my influences. Yes. I'm going to present it to you in a different this, way. This is it. Without giving credit to the original. Exactly. It, but it's, it's called I, copying. But how <laughs> can, I know it's called copying. How can one person... Uh, listen... After Carlos Mencia, like, how could one person be so ridiculous to turn around and say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to blatantly steal this. And when I get called out on it, I'm going to tell them I stole it and then I think a, steal more stuff. I, yeah, well, I think a lot of these people are complete egomaniacs mm-hmm. who really think they're in an isolated world. Like, oh, I only get, I'm the only one who gets this type of information. No one's watching these films and reading these comic books, uh-huh. like, in my circle. So the rest of the internet's not going to know about it. Like, dude, you do anything. People going to look at it and say, there's going to be at least one guy that says, you know what? I saw this entire movie in a comic mm-hmm. book. It's the same exact thing. Right. And I think that he just, he's a moron. He's probably on a lot of stuff and yeah. he's not thinking clearly. Do you and, think he's a drug addled youth with his head up his butt? Absolutely. <laughs> this, dude gets, this dude threatened to kill somebody in a bar. Like, uh-huh. he's shy of the booth. But who hasn't done that? No, he hasn't done that. <laughs> but, 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 you know, like, this is a guy who you, like, the, mm-hmm. I look at that, a picture of that guy. Okay. And I get angry. Okay. Uh, he was also the guy who was holding like Wild Ass Man hostage for a long period of time. Like mm-hmm. he was supposed to be playing York. He was supposed to be directing York. It would have been a good York. It would have been awful, awful <laughs> York. That guy looks like he eats shit all day long. Okay, <laughs> he is such a disgusting man child. Should we try to get him on the show? Absolutely. I know you have <laughs> industry contacts where you can get shot. I, I I'll get him. <laughs> I can get him. And I can get. Uh, I could definitely. What's his name? Um, Roman Polanski on the show. Let's do. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah are, get, you, are you gonna dress up as a fourteen year old girl? Yeah, absolutely. We'll yeah. Skype him. Sweet. I'll be a sweetie for him. Um, this is a mean today. <laughs> mean. All right. So uh, the shiny thing is really freaking weird. And, you know, the only reason we're talking about it because it's comic book related, especially with like the Dana Close. That's that's what kind of makes me feel like it's like a weird bit because the Dana Close stuff is very like, you know, tongue in cheek. It's real. Yeah. You know, it has. Oh, like it's the quality of his books. Right. The quality yeah. of his books. They're like, they're fantastic. They're very real. They're very like. So they're, they're, they're steeped in realism, but they're very. Uh, they can be gothic, weird. Right. Yeah. But they're also like kind of sobering and like, it's, yes. it's very yeah, interesting yeah, stuff, a, you know? So I feel like it's the same kind of like, like Tim Burton esque weird. Right. Yeah. And I feel like it's the, you know, like Shia doing this stuff is kind of, you know. But Daily, no, there's like from what I, like, I I think the only few times I've seen Daily Close mm-hmm. do a public speaking thing is when they pretty much have a gun to his head and he has to talk about Robert Crumb. Okay. Um, <laughs> and he doesn't even like talking about his own work. Yeah. And he's like a shy dude. So like, 
I think him having to deal with a maniac like Shia LaBeouf telling him like, oh, yeah, like I'm ripping your stuff up and have to publicly come out. I would definitely get my lawyer to like step in. <laughs> this is not in my wheelhouse. I, 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 you know, like it's, it's like the mm-hmm. last, like, like if you create a really, like a bunch of awesome works and you have like this one little short story you had that it's kind of close to your heart, maybe uh-huh. not. And then you find out like the worst possible dude, like, you know, Roy, like Ray Romano like steals one of our bits. <laughs> Like, have you thought about that? <laughs> no, I just like I just say like if someone like that you actually like you would be like, Ugh, why? Like, why would you go near my stuff? Like, how uh, did you even come across this? You're an asshole. <laughs> you don't like Ray Romano, do I you? I do not like Ray Romano. I, I give or take with Ray, but it's interesting that we've that had, was, we've had this conversation. Have we? Yeah, because you because you do a really good Ray Romano impression. I do. I was doing it in the car the other day. <laughs> I know. No, it is like all those all, like King of Queens, all those things like those people. Like, yeah. I just lump them all together. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the King of Queens. Um. But Ray Romano. Ray Romano is weird. Like I, I, I don't like that show either. To kind of get off <laughs> off topic a little bit. But it's funny that how that was the first. You were like, I don't know, Ray Romano is gonna steal our stuff. Try to think of like the word because, because honestly, because honestly, Shia LaBeouf is Ray Taken. Like, okay, so that would be the guy that like if I found out like I had a manuscript. And like I felt like mm-hmm. Shia LaBeouf like stole it. Okay, I would be I would completely be enraged. I wouldn't want to talk about it. He's your height of despicability. Uh, is he? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of this. Is there like a bigger, bigger asshole like nowadays than uh, there it, has to be? There's so many people out there. Hate like Edie Amin. Yeah, stole no, your man. <laughs> That'd be interesting. <laughs> kind of fascinating. Let's see what that. he does with it. Let's see what he does. <laughs> hey, Pol Pot, you want it? Take it. Um, I don't know. Who gets really weird? like Justin Bieber? Like Justin Bieber stole my mm-hmm. like my uh, my plans for a comic book and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> published it. Okay. But you only hate him on the surface because, like, you know, it's like the surface celebrity hate. No, you no, just like him. you just don't like. No, I hate that. You don't like Justin Bieber. No, I don't hate. I don't like any of these people. The f- people who I actually like uh-huh. are very few and far between. A uh, Ray Romano. Ray Romano, do not like can't that man. Stand him. Can't stand I, him. This is kind of interesting because Carlos like, Messina, like you brought up another guy, I okay. can't stand, and I think for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. This is very interesting. I How about wanna... George Lopez? Uh, I like George Lopez. I kind of <laughs> like George Lopez. <laughs> David I, Letterman. I, I love David Letterman. No, he's you. uncomfortable. Why? No, I like him. He's really uncomfortable. I oh, him. yeah. I, know. I love David Letterman. I think he's one of the best. Not a Letterman guy. Who are you, a Letterman guy? I don't think no. You're Conan Brian. Hey. I'm a Conan. Hey. I'm a Conan. I'm a Conan. I'm a Conan Brian guy. I can't, I can't stand Letterman. I can't I stand Leno. Him. Leno's a genius. Uh, I don't think he's a genius. He's a genius. I think he was a genius. Uh, I think now it's... He's going through the motions. He's, I can't yeah. watch the show anymore. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. You know, like, the, I never thought the guy could interview somebody properly. His interviews have always graded on my well, nerves. He, he's like, he, well, he's one of those, like, really unusual personalities. Like, he's yeah. like a Stern, where he's like, that's where he gets along so well at Stern. It's like, he's like one of those guys who's like, I have my way. You can't, like, don't talk to me before the show goes on. And, like, yeah. he's like, oh, weird. He keep, he's in his, like, glass castle. Mm-hmm. I know you're a Howard Stern guy. Yeah, I, I'm a Howard. I lived on. I, I yeah, I love Howard. Yeah. I watched him interview. Um, I watched a couple of his interviews, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy's brilliant. Yeah. Just the other day, I was just going through some. Well, who was it? God, it was. I went. I watched an. It was a weird guest too. It was a weird guest. <laughs> uh, oh, Marilyn Manson. Okay. Well, Marilyn Manson. Unbel- great, he's a great guest. Yeah. yeah, but he that it was such a good interview, and like he talked about like Ben Affleck, how he hates Ben Affleck. Sweet. I gotta check that out. I hate yeah, that. I hate Ben Affleck. Um, and he said that he was gay. I think he's a good filmmaker. Yeah, I think Argo is very overrated, but <laughs> I I can't stand. You don't Argo. want him as the bat. I do not want him. We, 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 yeah, I, the Batman. Not, not happening. It's very interesting how like you have such celebrity hatred, <laughs> and I never really knew. that. I really get frustrated. Yeah, you know. uh, I did this. Uh, you know, like when uh, gossip columns have <laughs> the blind items, like you yeah. know, like yeah, this, this B list celebrity got caught killing a dog on the streets mm-hmm. of Mexico the other day. So they had they there's actually uh, a website now called uh-huh. Blind Items Revealed where it talks about like uh you know th- what these crazy celebrities are doing. Okay. And I'm fascinated by it cuz I like I it boils my blood like oh I got to get away with this stuff. Uh-huh. Like <laughs> Like Rihanna, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I find that I've known you for so long, and I find it fascinating that you just like you have that like celebrity hatred. Uh, can can we play a little game? Yeah, real quick. All right, uh, I'll play this for the rest of the F- Mary Kill. It. Are we playing oh. F Mary Kill? No, no, we're we're <laughs> okay. gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna relate it to comic books with uh, people who have started. Just one word. I'll go through a few of them. Oh, cool. And you just <laughs> let me know. For next hour, let's do this. one word. <laughs> um, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, successful. <laughs> Relating your hate to Robert no, I, love, I, I love Robert. Okay, Jr. so you, yeah. all right. can you can you when I, I'll say a name and you go love him or you say hate him and then you give me a word. Okay, all right. Uh, Chris Evans. 
Chris Evans is Captain America, bro. I love him. Okay. Very smart. Uh, funny guy. <laughs> I'm not gonna do one word. I'll do as sure as possible. <laughs> okay. It can't be limited. Chris Hemsworth. Oh, I love the dude. Christian Bale. Love the dude. One of the okay. best actors out there. I'm very happy he's not Batman anymore. Should I go? Should I go outside the comic book? Yeah, thing? go crazy. Yeah. Um, that's what you get the the vitriol. Yeah, because I, I feel like anybody who's in a comic book movie for the most part, you'll be like, yeah. Because right, right, I think they have a lot of likable people in the mm-hmm. in that world. Taylor Kitsch. Who's that? Uh, is that who's Gambit? Gambit? Yeah. I listen. I was a big fan of Friday That's Night Lights. Right. Yeah. So I can't say. And he's in that new Lone Survivor movie. I'm uh-huh. like, I'm okay with that guy. He was John Carter too. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm always, like an right. Even yeah. as much as I hate John Carter, I can't. You know, mm-hmm. I can't talk smack about that movie. Um. <laughs> give me like, give me like pop stars. You want like, you want like the dirt. Yeah, man. Uh, Christina Aguilera. Oh. CeeLo. Uh, I have a little thing for CeeLo because I I like you like, like short ball black like men <laughs> who can't who can't reach their their midsection who come out in two can costumes. <laughs> like, I want a small black man shaped like a bird. <laughs> uh, like if give me some more, give me some more, give me like um, I'm I'm gonna come on pop, come on Andrew, you're you're pop scene number Blake one. Blake Shelton, who is Blake Shelton? The the guy from The Voice. I'm going through everybody on Michael the Voice. Michael Moore. I like Michael Moore. That's he a good makes, one. He makes good documentaries. I think he's an asshole though. Um. Ah, Bill Maher. Oh my God, that's a piece of garbage. Okay, <laughs> good show. Like yeah. he has, usually has a good panel, but that guy should never open his mouth. Always like politically incorrect. I don't like his uh, his new deal. No, because he's like taking the asshole level to like fifteen. Yeah, he's yeah. he's just as bad as like a Glenn Beck or a Bill O'Reilly. He's okay, terrible. That's interesting. He's uh-huh. just Bill he's, O'Reilly. Uh, you know what? I used to hate that man. I think mm-hmm. he's an idiot, but I, I know that he's a smart man. Beyond the, the from Long Island, yeah, it's from Long Island. Long Island. I really respected what he did with John Stewart on that um, that thing for the troops mm-hmm. when they did the, uh, the the debate between the two of them, and he, he actually gave mm-hmm. props to John Stewart. He's good to do it. He's playing a character. Yeah, no, and I agree. Yeah. And same thing with Glenn Beck and all that stuff. But I don't think Glenn Beck's playing a character. Paul Giamatti. As as, uh, <laughs> I love. Paul, I've been talking yeah. about Paul Giamatti for like three weeks now, defending the man. I, I love, love him. I love Paul Giamatti. I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. They all make me feel uncomfortable. John C. Riley. John C. Riley, I enjoy very much. Uh-huh. Uh, the people who get me are like the like the people who have made it through reality shows, uh-huh. or people who are like a pop like a Kristen Be- Bell, like a Beyonce drives me insane. Kristen Bell, I like her. I like I Kristen Bell. I like her. Uh, like Beyonce drives me crazy. Like they re- they released that that video album. <gasps> I downloaded the freaking album to make myself angry. Like uh-huh. I went through the whole thing. I watched the five part documentary. I read all the <laughs> on this. I do it to myself. I like I really put myself in. Like, I know this is a departure from the show, but I'm. I'm fascinated by uh, by the celebrity you, thing. I'm not. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. No, 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 I no. just think it's it's amazing. It's a two person show. There's no way to put anyone on the spot. That's true. <laughs> uh, you ever see Ghost World? Yes. You, just, you know how Steve Buscemi is like the old blues mm-hmm. guy who's driving like, what's wrong with this person crossing mm-hmm. the street? They want to die. Yeah. That's me 24 like, seven. Okay. I leave the house. I go in the car. I lose my mind. I watch television. I can't watch television anymore because of you. Just get so angry. Yeah. But I but I go on all the gossip news sites. Uh-huh. I read the paper. I read the daily news. I read, I read the post. <laughs> And I absorb all like the Derek Cheetah, Tiger Woods garbage. Uh-huh. And... That was a very good uh, segue into bringing it back to the Daniel Close stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> with, uh, with Ghost World. <laughs> oh, yeah, unconsciously, you. unconsciously, it's all, it's all trying to bring it back. Part of the plan. So Shy is number one right now. Shy, uh, for whatever reason, I can't get guys who are <laughs> like up there now. It drive me insane. Like a Bieber would definitely uh-huh. drive me insane. Like a Chris Brown would uh-huh. drive me insane. Usher, uh, Usher. I don't like Usher. Um, babyface. I have a problem, babyface. Actually, no, I do have a problem with babyface. I didn't like his name. <laughs> and he didn't really have a babyface. Uh, give me your reaction, Shia LaBeouf, Moon Knight. Oh God, <laughs> that's a good book I'm looking forward to. Warren Ellis on, yes. on Moon Knight. Absolutely, I think he's the one who can who can take the character out of the dregs. Hopefully, did you ever read his Avengers book? Uh, that graphic novel we put out, Endless Wartime. No, I just started. I just started reading. It. It's very good. It came out like last month, right? Uh-huh. Ah, I'm like, I'm so behind on like a lot of stuff, man. That's why we're talking about celebrity news instead of like, did you catch the inks <laughs> on a friggin' Conan number twenty seven? <laughs> I got. Uh, you should come back this next week and give me like more names of who I. I will. I will. I absolutely. <laughs> the- friggin' Am Levine. Ugh. Nah, I'm not. I'm not big on the uh, the Adam Levine. Andrew's a big fan. I'm a huge Adam. Yeah. I like his tattoos. Do you love Adam? You love Adam <laughs> He's pretty. Uh. <laughs> Gross. Awful Jew. Um, <laughs> Mark, you hate him. Mark Maron. I've been trying to get you to I, listen to the uh, to the Mark Maron. I stuff. like Mark Maron. I think I, I need to take Mark Maron small doses. I've I don't understand why the show's that gigantic. What, like Mark? I 
What like the, I like him at times. The podcast, yeah, it's good. I don't get it. It's super self-effacing. I can listen <laughs> to it all day. Guests. And notice he has a personal relationship with a lot of people on the show. So Joe Rogan's has, podcast baffles me at times. I like Joe Rogan. I do too. Mm-hmm. But like sometimes, like I'll watch. I'm like I'll listen. I'm like, ah, oh, this is actually not bad. And then like there are times that like it's just nothing. He's mm-hmm. like just rambling about concrete. Well, I give him, I give him, <laughs> I give him a lot of respect for the Cross Mancia stuff. Yeah, like, going yeah. the crusade for you know everybody else. Uh, and also, I give anyone a pass that was on news radio. Everyone gets a pass in my book. Oh yeah, Dave Foley. Yeah, Dave Foley. Dave Foley. He gets a he gets a big one. All right, so uh, so this year, apart from uh, this year, this show, apart from uh, top twenty worst celebrities of the year, we're coming we're coming back <laughs> to that next week. We're gonna have like a little bit called uh, we should do a little bit called uh, called the hate round with uh, John Adler. Ooh, the hate, the sizzle, <laughs> the sizzle, the, the grill. <laughs> Uh, so we kind of put together like a small list of what we really liked from 2013 since we didn't really do a closeout show and this is going to be our closeout show. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Mm-hmm. You don't like Kanye? Uh, Guy puts out a good it. album, man. He does, but I can't stand it. I can, you know, like I... Uh, Lindsay Lohan, Jessica Simpson. I have zero expectations when it comes to celebrities. No, you know they're what awful. I, mean? like, I think they're getting worse. If I met one, you know... It it depends. Like what I what did you, I did you see Michael Bay freak out at? Uh, I didn't see it, but I heard about it. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a robot malfunctioning. <laughs> it was like a robot being to- asked like, "What to- what is love?" Uh-huh. I can't do this. But couldn't transform into a car to get away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to talk about curved televisions. <laughs> uh, I got right. I do gotta check it out. All All right. Right. So it's very good. It's, it's very, very cringy. <laughs> So, being the old timey comic book fans that we are, Ooh. we came. I'm sure we're gonna get a, uh, a couple of tweets or emails about like, <laughs> what about this indie book, dude? How could you miss this? I went super indie about a bunch of books that you never heard of. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, let's just start. Let's do like a little sm- uh, uh, smattering. Best villain of the year. Are you looking at your? your I'm looking at my list. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had uh, old timey Red Skull coming up in um. Coming out new in uh, Uncanny Avengers, I think you had the same thing. Uh, I had that, and um, what's wrong with this spreadsheet? You also had uh, Iron Maiden Bullseye. Yeah, I love that. Which I, was, I, you know what? That's very surprising. That was really cool. Yeah, I, I think I think overall that I'm I'm gonna uh, Daredevil's all over my mm-hmm. my list. I was a big big fan. I'm always a big fan of Daredevil. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a nice original take on a really fascinating bad guy. Yeah. Because Dare like Bullseye is such a weird. You know, uh, opposite because he's mm-hmm. like he's perfect. You know, the guy who could see very, very well right. and never misses. Uh, they they took him to a new level, and I think in the next year he's gonna be even more interesting. Whatever, like he mutates into whatever. But don't get me wrong, like I am a huge, huge Red Skull fan. Yeah, like they, these guys are definitely t- you know tied for me. Uh, Skull with Xavier's brain and it's old school racist nineteen forties yeah. Red Skull. I am completely now with, especially since it's become eventually onslaught down the line. Right, I think I think that's that kind of like sealed the deal for me. Also, where it was just it was like that re, the the Rick Remender kind of really outside the box storytelling where he uh, he actually did an interview not too long ago where he was like, I'm a I'm sorry, it wasn't an interview. I think it was in the back of Black Science mm-hmm. where he was like, you know, like I am a huge proponent of out of the box anything goes storytelling and he's like i feel like i've made basically saying like he feels like he's made it work and i agree with that there's a lot of oh, people who try to do that. that and like from you know from uh fracking castle to this oh my god uh but like a lot of stuff that he's done you know is is really that out of the box kind of thing and that just bringing back like he I, the thing i like about him and what he did with that character was that he kind of makes you remember why you love comics mm. you know like the stuff on uncanny x-force like with the mainstream comics just like oh my god it's, it was amazing like comic booky dramatic stuff and he's doing the same where he's taking the, the comic book quote unquote level to the next level with having a racist red skull put a piece of charles xavier's brain into his own brain and the and like there's a uh, it did a lot of things and and that made me very happy as a, as a fan of the villain red skull mm-hmm. uh the problem with red skull for a long time is that he he's he works great for captain america yeah uh, but unless he has a cosmic cube or something, he's not really a threat against like the Avengers. Right. So he was always kind of limited to just like the Captain America universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, this him premiering an Uncanny Avengers, where it's the blending of the two X Men and the Avengers world. He's like him having Xavier's brain, having that power level, and now being like the most powerful psychic on the world in the world is mm-hmm. is a really incredible step for a character in the right direction. Arguably, also the most uh, powerful racist in the world. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> man, very. Did you, did you read that Marvel Point One thing that came out this week? No, it was like six bucks. 
Uh, it was all right. It was, yeah. but like it's a. Uh, there was one one page of him like looking in a mirror, like contemplating the future. <laughs> so we, it's a, you should read yeah. the story. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you my file. It's okay, very, please. It's, it's very good. Um, and that that's a good segue too because uh, both of us had for best team book, Uncanny Avengers. Yeah, that goes without saying. Yeah, like the dynamic on the team just smashing to get like because we we were talking about this like well over a year ago when the book came out on the show about how like why has this not been done before? You're smashing the X Men universe and the Avengers universe together to kind of like make it a cohesive thing. Mm -hmm. And but this is the only place that you're getting that now, which is kind of weird because everything went back to like the status quo of like you X Men do your thing, we Avengers do our thing. Now we got bigger things to worry about because. You know, we have the incursions and all that stuff, and all whatever Hickman's doing with the Avengers world. That's know? my 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 two honorable honorable mentions are definitely the all new X Men mm -hmm. and uh, Uncanny and yeah. uh, the book you just mentioned. The book you just mentioned. What was it? Um, the Hickman. I just said the Hickman. Avengers the the new Avengers. The yeah, new yeah. Avengers stuff. Like new the Avengers. new Avengers book is a fascinating book that yeah. is, I think, is an awesome weird way of dealing with a team. But Uncanny is like boiled down yeah it's got the romances it's got the backstabbings people don't get along it's got the humor it's got the humor it's got like you know it's got mm -hmm. all the guys it's got captain america got thor got wolverine got all these guys it also has um uh the uh what you had for coolest moment which was the mass death in that one issue where you had the death of scarlet witch rogue and wonder man, wonder man in one issue. one issue um that's big which is pretty big. That's and half I, your team. I also feel like it's not really talked about. I feel like, like this book is so under the radar sometimes for like a mainstream book because nobody wants to like kind of like stretch their wings and pick. It's a weird time for Marvel where the books are good, but it's a lot of independent stuff happening by itself. Yeah, it's a lot of like it, there's there's stuff like Infinity, but I think more so than ever, mm -hmm. stuff is a bit separated. Yeah, I feel like the FF does their stuff. I feel like the mm -hmm. Avengers world is definitely their Avengers world. There's not yeah. much like you know crossing of paths. Aside from appearance here, appearance there. Mm -hmm. But like the Uncanny Avengers book, I think still serves a purpose like is Uncanny X-Force, mm -hmm. where in retrospect, after it's collected, it's going to be picked up. I think because it doesn't, it's not billed as an Infinity tie-in yeah. and that really is its own machine that you feel the repercussions much later on, mm -hmm. uh, it makes, it hurts the book a bit. But I know it still does well, but yeah. it definitely should be the number one book that's in Marvel, my opinion. Right. Yeah, and sales-wise, because you have all the elements of, mm -hmm. you have a great art team, you have a great guy behind it, uh, and you have massive, crazy stuff happening. It. Right. It is It is a giant, it should be like the marquee team book. Yeah. And it's know? very violent. Right. Just it's, like it's, on Kenny X-Force. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, which it's, is my favorite book last year. Yeah. It's it's an extremely, like, it's a, it's a good, it's a really good read. My coolest moment was, um I, I it was from Infinity, when Thor uh, threw the hammer around uh, the sun. Yes. And it came through the, um, the builder's body. Uh, which is also tied with another Thor moment from Infinity where he, Thanos challenges anybody to get him, like God or man, and Thor just shows up and, you know, I'm a sucker for this. For the I'm a, I saw him. Yeah. I think, I think he does some of the coolest stuff ever in, uh, in, uh, like the big events, mm -hmm. you know, killing a big black guy. Uh, <laughs> Ragnarok, when, uh, they, when they killed, uh, Goliath. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, a that, lot though. of people, a lot of people, because uh, I, I trying to refresh my memory and looking mm -hmm. past, you know, this this whole year. Yeah, uh, I looked at a lot of other top ten lists that are out mm -hmm. there. Almost everyone had God Bomb as like their one of their favorite storylines this year. The, okay, um, the stuff with you know the three Thors and anything. Yeah, I liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think the beginning and the and the very end of it are better than the the meat of it. The meat of the middle. It, it went a little too long. It went a little it it's went very long. It crossed into the uh it's the, over a year. the mystery of the steak stuff a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um but I it well that was one of my favorite books of the year, you know. Yeah. Just like and even like the the what Jason Aaron is doing now with I kind of wish I, I love uh Ron Garney, but I kind of wish he wasn't doing the book. Is he doing the book now? Yeah, he's always oh, doing the um the dark elf stuff. Yeah. I'm um, not a big fan. So No, he's going to be the new Mandarin. Who? Mal Kaith. Who? The, Mal oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. The Mandarin. I can see it, I guess. Um, so I think very, you know, I, I didn't put it on my list, but one of my favorite storylines also was uh, the uh, the Secret Origin of Iron Man stuff, which okay. I think was very underrated as well. So what's your what's your storyline of the year? <sighs> see, I'm, this is something I'm going to be working through all of 2014. Mm -hmm. You had Infinity mm -hmm. and Saga, which I, I think Saga is, is probably one of the best books out there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's always consistently surprising. It's it does what 
Uh, Brian King for one is very good at, at big surprises in each yeah. other's books and making each one matter. Uh, and Finney is such a complicated, weird uh, story. Mm-hmm. The best storyline, I can't say. I mean, there was a lot of stuff mm-hmm. I liked. Like, I liked the whole. Uh, I was a big fan of the Daredevil wrap up right, okay. for the year. Like the stuff that he was, you know, the Bullseye, the Foggy Nelson, you know, his life mm-hmm. long apart. I'm always a big fan of that. Um, I was a huge, I, you know what? In my opinion, probably the best storyline in terms of my emotional investment to it is two things the Death in the Family storyline. Okay. I was so invested into it, and okay. people complain about the ending and anything like that, but I didn't. It's good. I didn't have a big deal about that. And um, it's a pure Spider Man, like the whole like beginnings mm-hmm. of it with. With like you know Doc Ock right. taking over the body and that like I feel like it kind of lost steam recently. I I agree with that. Yeah. But I think in the beginning it was so tight and so interesting mm-hmm. and I'm such a Spidey fan that yeah. it was just it did it for me. It did lose for me. It lost a lot of steam because um, he a slot went from having like these awesome like gotcha moments to going it's, the course. It's yeah. It's kind of like all right now now Doc Ock is Spidey and you know like I feel I personally I I like the book. And I'm not going to shit on slot at all, like a lot of fans have been doing about like having Doc Ock as Spidey. But I kind of want a little more. I want like a little extra, kind of like a little hint of a resolution at this point. We are. We they just, they just leaked out that being Spider Man number one is starting in a couple months. Okay, so we're getting something out of Great. the whole thing. <laughs> but, I'd rather have it in book than you know what I mean. Like that's one of the things I disagree with about solicits is like I'd rather have that in book. And instead of like, oh well, this is coming out. Cool, it's coming. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, did you read Wolverine this week? I dropped it. Did you? Yeah. So this is the big issue that they're saying like you need to read this issue or anything. So Wolverine doesn't have healing factor anymore. This is the Paul Cornell Wolverine? This is a Paul okay. Cornell with, with yeah. and then there's a big st- saber storyline. Mm. But the last panel is him. He, I think he loses an eye. Mm-hmm. He's like really really messed up, and he's like, I'm not. He, the whole thing is like basically saber tooth says like. You know, all of your life you've been a crazy dude, and you were like with my you're my partner, and then you like you're faking it. And now you say you're a professor, mm-hmm. but once everyone looks at you, you're still a murderer. Like you know, superheroes don't kill, Avengers don't kill, X Men don't kill, but mm-hmm. you know, you're the only one that can break that rule every once in a mm-hmm. while. You're a hypocrite, and he makes him feel comp- he emotionally destroys him, and okay. on top of all this, so the last page is like him at X Mansion. He's like, hey, well, you know, Storm's like, hey, what's going on, Wolverine? And he's like, the Wolverine's dead. There's no more Wolverine. He walks off into the distance. And the next page is solicit. Wolverine number one, Brandon Starr. And he's got the gun. <laughs> he's got a gun. Uh, I'm psyched, so man. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> I I uh, I I kinda I fell off the Paul Cornell run because it it's not that it didn't get it didn't get weird. I like Wolver- weird Wolverine stuff, but it, it fell into the category of like too fat. Do I <laughs> It's too fat. It was yeah. like it, it should it could it should it should have just been a saber storyline. Mm-hmm. It should have been something like a little bit more starting a storyline yeah. off with like a microverse virus infecting a little kid that you have to kill is weird. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, not only the weirdness, but it's like, is this book worth enough for me to plunk down money for it every That's month? What it comes down to. You know, and because like, you know, Wolverine's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I dropped Savage Wolverine also, but I heard the, it would be amazing now. Yeah, like the jock stuff was apparently like really good. But that that book fell into the thing where it's like, you know, like Scarlet Spider for me. Like, you know what? Like, I just want to have time. Right, it's the time, and then I'd rather pick up a book like Black Science or, you know, the awesome image of, like, Lazarus yeah. than, you know, if it's between something of that caliber and, like, no offense to Paul Cornell, but, you know, like a Wolverine story where he has to, you know, find an infected kid and do whatever he has to do because he's the best at what he does, I'm going with the Greg Ruka yeah, Lazarus stuff. That, that's a good point, I didn't because re- I didn't even realize that was what my buying, you know, and reading yeah. You know, history has been for the last year or two where time has become more limited. Mm. And I, and it's just like I can't spend like three or four hours reading comic books, right. you know, a day or whatever. Uh, those, I used to pick up everything mm. tie ins, main series, if it was useless, you know, maybe you find a gem. You had to really spend a lot of time with that. Yeah. Right. I, I have taken away a lot of those mid card books and really replaced them with like stuff I could try out. You're heavy hitters. Yeah. yeah. A, that's a good way to put it. Averill. I the feel like <laughs> <laughs> the body guy. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever i can't wait for that new dvd i want to see what's up i, I hope uh, i hope averill makes his comeback um yeah it's 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 kind of interesting especially when you get older where you're just kind of like i've never because we you know when we worked the store we used to read everything and you know continuing down the line we still would read a bunch of stuff and now it's like i don't really like it doesn't like a lot of stuff doesn't do it for me you know like most of the dc stuff just doesn't do just it do for it. me um a good handful of Marvel stuff, just like I, it'll fall by the wayside because it's not congruent like to um, Fearless Defenders. Besides, yeah, Fearless Defenders, 
uh besides like the two Wolverine books I mentioned, Deadpool, you know, like yeah, I'm done that. with Deadpool. Um anything that's outside of you know, the pure mainstream of Marvel. I, mean, I shouldn't say the pure mainstream, but like I I love FF. I think it's fantastic, you know. I wouldn't consider that a mainstream Marvel book. Mm, um okay, yeah. You know, Fantastic Four I really dig. That's Iron what I'm excited for. What? Because since FF is coming to an end now, right. for the most part, uh, you know, now we're getting the Dan Slot, Mike Allred team on Silver Surfer. Mm-hmm. They previewed that in, in uh right, in yeah. point one. I think that's gonna be the the Hawkeye of next year. The breakout hit. Yeah. Yeah. I love Frankshin, man. Like he ma- he made both of our uh our, uh, I actually, our best writer. My was mine was actually a typo. I didn't mean fraction in that. Really? <laughs> I swear. It was I was trying to correct it and, sh- and save the document. Both of his uh, head remender and fraction. I, I mine was remender and, and Hickman actually. Okay. <laughs> I'll change it. Uh, uh, <laughs> fraction fraction uh <laughs> why cuz of Hawkeye and cuz of FF? Hawkeye, FF. Um, you like Satellite Sam. Satellite Sam. There's another book you put Sex up. Criminals. Sex Criminals. Like, that dude is hitting it on all cylinders. I man. guess. Like, you know, like the Sex the sex Criminal things, I like the book. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's more press related than in anything. Like, I think it has more hype. I think a lot of the books deserve the hype that Sex Criminals got because mm-hmm. of the controversy it got. Um, FF, I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hawkeye, I really like. But I think in terms of. Of like how important it was to me this year and how like my enjoyment. Remender, absolutely. Remender's mm-hmm. been killing it for like since he's become he's gone to Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh and Hickman, I think him taking over the Avengers world and taking that weird uh super science of like what he did for Shield and Secret Warriors and, and put into this. Four. Yeah, and Fantastic yeah. Four and like injecting into this book. Did you read that new Avengers from last week I was telling you about? Oh my god. So like yeah. so uh, this is why I love a book like New Avengers. Mm. I love books where it's a bunch like that's the book that is, for lack of a better term, the NCIS of of the of the Marvel universe. Okay, which a bunch of guys sitting around a room talking about stuff for the yeah. most part. Um, the it, this issue is all about like them discovering like the, they can now look into other universes mm-hmm. and reads like I got the idea. I know what to do. We can build this this unit this this portal. Yeah. like dude, your entire run of Fantastic Four was talking about. How terrible of an idea this right. is. He's such an asshole. Oh, by the way. <laughs> by the way, I, I did this before. Mm-hmm. Terrible results. And people forget that the Supreme Intelligence is now is two cloned reads made into the, su- the Supreme right. Intelligence. Um, it's, or it's, two altered reality reads. See, that's why Infinity, and I'm putting in all the, uh, I'm putting in all the tie-ins to that, even like New Avengers. Yeah, like, that's why it that, became, that's part of the main storyline. Right. That's yeah. why it became my, my favorite storyline, because it oh, was right. so, you, know, you don't, like, you don't get a story that complex with um, and this is one of the most complex mainstream comic book stories that's come out in an extremely long time um, with a lot of, of elements, right? With a lot of major characters and major uh, world changing events from the return of Thanos um, to the death of Thanos, the death of Thanos, Thanos, the introduction of his son, the introduction of his son, the Black Bolt stuff. The human stuff is, I think, the biggest of the come out of that. Right. The inhuman stuff, the, the fact that their realities are starting to close in on um, the, the new Avengers are killing Earth. other universes, right? You know, the, they're, they're ki- the world kills now, right? Because they they're dealing with like these villains that aren't like it's not Moses Magnum showing up and saying like, "Haha, I'm no, doing like, stuff." It's like the bad guys from the Invisibles, like the Archons, right? It, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like it's like it's these these ethereal other world beings because Hickman is taking the idea of like, well, if superheroes exist on this world and this plane of existence, then they exist somewhere else, and their villains could be b- worse Earth, than, yeah. than your villains, you know? Which is which is the case. Um, I, what was it? Earth twenty two three zero nine nine. Yeah, everybody got completely eradicated Murdered. by these dudes. Um, and their planet got blown up. Yeah, you know. So like, and it's it's kind of cool, you know. And you have like these different elements, um, within this story that just make it crazy. And you also kind of see he's. I think he's stripping down the Illuminati for what they are. At this point, they're kind of like they're really smart dudes who are just really scared that they're going to destroy the planet by accident. Well, yeah, I, I think and I think they're all doing stuff they don't want to do. Like Doctor Strange is really messed up for what happened in Infinity. Mm-hmm. Um, that has he was mind raped, um, and like all these guys are making mm-hmm. really bad choices. And, like Beast being sucked into this whole world and kind of dealing very well with like these secret people. Like Beast has been the benevolent, like conscious consciousness of uh, of X Men for a really t- long time. He right. puts him in a room with a bunch of geniuses. Now he wants to. Strong universes, right? Um, the fascinating book. I gotta say, you know what? Now that you bring up bring up bring up the idea of like mm-hmm. how many Hickman books are involved in the Infinity thing, it it, it raises the stakes on where it's, it is in my in my terms. Of it's my really favorites. insane. Um, yeah. Also, you know, like the whole but the oh. Thanos thing was like when I I think it diffused me a little bit mm-hmm. when I read that the Thanos thing was a last minute addition to it. Okay. 
Because like I thought it was kind of genius that like oh like you know you have like all these threats and like underlining there's this Thanos thing happening mm-hmm. in the background that eventually boils over. It took away from some like to create that like giving him the credit that he deserves. Hickman. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on that. I'm gonna extend that further to uh, somebody who wants to know what your shirt says in the chat room. Brooklyn. 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 Let's say Brooklyn or Crooklyn. Brooklyn. Is Brooklyn? Mm-hmm. Is that all the food spots in Brooklyn? Yeah. You can find the Jews somewhere. <laughs> um, the, um, uh, the other the other thing that goes along with that with the Hickman stuff is the the whole um, spreading out the Avengers thing, which I'm 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 putting I'm lumping all of that into one category. To me, the entire like the entire know, Avengers universe, Hickman Avengers, the universe. Starbrand stuff, the makers, the builders. The, I love the builder stuff. The first story arc with um, wiping uh, Cap's brain, which is like. Wiping Cack Spring, uh, Ex Nihilo. Like, I love Ex Nihilo. You know, I'm a big fan of Ex Nihilo. Like his, like anything he's done, because he's he's in control of the Avengers now, and anything he did in 2013 was was friggin' crazy weird. Um, I can, never disappoints me. No, nah, I can't. I can't suggest to people enough um, to pick up his Fantastic Four run, which I think was my favorite run on that book. Yeah, of all time. Uh, um, I think so too. I think it's such a slow burn in terms mm-hmm. of like it was re- it was built around standalone issues that were secretly becoming a gigantic storyline. Right. Exactly. And the compliment between Fantastic Four and FF were a beautiful, beautiful combo. And plus his, the stuff that... The Giant Storm Death stuff is fantastic. Ah, oh, it's amazing. And that stuff has trickled down into the Avengers stuff, especially with Reed, because like you said, like he's... This is the thing about um, Reed Richards is... Character of the year. They were, like, they, they were adventurers, they're a family, and I guess they're heroes, but they're not the people you call, like... You know, put this fire out, or like Magneto's here. Like, what do we do? Let's call Reed Richards. He's always just been the most logical person in the Marvel universe, where it supersedes the right. the moral part of it. Exactly. And yeah. if he didn't have his family to think about and the people he truly Maybe loves, he got to do exactly. Yeah. So I think Hickman's Reed Richards is the perfect Reed Richards because he's completely nuts, but he doesn't think he's nuts because that's the my whole logic thing. Exactly. That's why. That's why I'm always been fascinated by Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really weird dynamic between this family, and it only like, they're all completely different for the most part. Right. But Reed Richards has once they start really focusing and exploring his dark side, mm-hmm. it makes the character that much more fascinating. And I think like the Illuminati, the uh, the Stargate thing he made was re- the bridge was like really <laughs> yeah. like brought that to the forefront where mm-hmm. this guy is barely key- like Illuminati is bad for his mental health. Right, right. Like a bunch of other very logical people and Namor, like going there, mm-hmm. saying like making him into more of a maniac. Right, but Namor's well, like the most black and white person in that whole equation because he's like, ah, oh, let's destroy him. Yeah, let's, that's I'm what I'm gonna, saying. Like that's what yeah. that's what's so bad about it is like right. it's, he's just all about like you know being winning, king, winning. Yeah. yeah. Um, black Panther also has like kind of like the shit out of the stick. <laughs> he's done a great job mm-hmm. of making me interested in in, uh, in him after all this. Like, yeah. Because I didn't give a crap when he became Lord of the Dead. Mm. Uh, but he's made me care about that t- aspect of the character, right? Well, because they're all like the, the the crazy thing about that is, if you think about it, if you really displace the uh, Jonathan Hickman Illuminati stuff, like one of the big underlying things is that they're all and they're they're dealing with all these world breaking events, uh, events, yeah. and all this stuff is that these guys are all kings in their own right of yes. whatever they're good at. You know, Black Panther's literally the king of the dead; he was the king of a nation. Namor's a king. Tony Stark is a captain of industry. Yeah. Um, Reed Richards is King of Science. Uh, King's King of Science. Uh, Beast is the King of Mutants. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's a represent. Yeah, he's because who else is like Wolverine's not going to show up at the table? Exactly. And yeah. Cyclops is out of the community. Right. So it has to be Beast, like the smartest and most logical dude to kind of keep everything on the level. And they tried it with Captain America, but then they had to erase his brain. Yeah. Which I it's I you know like the the end of Infinity was uh, then basically warning. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Stark, that everything's going to come crashing down. Like, right. Everyone's going to find out about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And um, that, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to jump into another. Oh, please. Another topic. Um, well, not off topic, but our. Uh, uh, let's see. Best artist. You had um, Chris Samney and the Daredevil team. He's the man. Mm. Uh, I, I lump all the Daredevil guys as one soul Mike Allred, Chris Samney, okay. uh, Paul Rivera. Uh, Marcus Martin at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my favorite type of art. Yeah, for most times, like the really like when I first saw Chris Samney on the arguably kids book Mighty Thor, mm-hmm. uh, I was so happy to see him get picked up on a book like Daredevil. And he's really like that. That book has been so artistically pleasing. Yeah. Um, 
I would put some other people in my list too, but like I, I think like the BPRD team, the new the new recruits for like the Hellboy universe have been absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy talented. Um, my other choice, tied I didn't put it on the list, but tied with Chris Samney is definitely Francesco Francavella because I've talked about him the most this yeah, year. Yeah, he's he's awesome. My my pick was uh, Daniel Aha from Hawkeye, just because he nails he nails it so well, and especially I'm really big on facial expressions. Yeah. And if Kevin McGuire was doing a book last year, I probably would have put him. He might win on the this list. year. Well, He's for Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. which is an interesting book. You know, now that you mention it, did you read the uh, the last issue? Yeah. Well, now I think it's finally finding its footing. Mm-hmm. I think now we're trying to figure out what the hell he's going to do with this book. And also, I've, uh-huh. I got very excited that they have they're they're bringing back the old costume for uh, Star Lord. Yes. Um, I do like the other uh, button up though. The the one he's wearing now. No, he's got the. Uh, Oh, the, yeah, the yeah. flashy jam. Yeah. I, but I like the fact they're bringing back the helmet, and I think, because that's mm-hmm. going to be the one in the movie. But, like, that book is becoming a very unusual, like, character driven book. It's becoming more of a Bendis book, but still maintaining that Guns Gal stuff. It needs uh, more members, in my opinion. I think I think they're good with the members. I keep picturing uh, Batista as, as Drax. You see the picture of that? It works, man. Yeah. That dude, he's got that peanut head. That's yeah, he what. That peanut head. Uh, he's got that peanut head. Um, I, lo- I love David Haas' work. I think um, he probably had, next to Daredevil, like, the the best uh, narrative art style. I feel like, uh, like I feel Pizza like Dog was incredible. Pizza like, Dog was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I can't put Outer on the list because that guy wins everything for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the, read, read that Silver Surfer preview because mm-hmm. it's like, that guy, you could tell, every time we read something from All Red, you could tell this guy's having a major influence on the storytelling of the story. Oh, yeah. You know, he's definitely communicating with his writers. Um, and his stuff on Daredevil was just so rocking. The few and far between that mm-hmm. was. But Aha definitely killed it. I would I would put him like I said, I'd put Hawkeye higher on everything if it was on time this year. Okay. And I'm not and I'm, and that's not something I usually I'm a stickler for, mm. but in a year where like Marvel really pushed to get everything on time mm. and we actually had Infinity Ship on time. Yeah. Is I, I, I have to enforce that along with that. I think it's a very good thing. Okay. Let's go. And I like the fact that they're working with different artists on every book. That's yes. a great idea to keep books on. Uh I I, I have a great stable of artists they can pull from. I agree with you completely on that. Um, I, I'm trying to think of the one book that kind of suffered from it, where it was just kind of like Infinity to a certain degree, because you you would read an arc and then yeah. it would switch over to somebody else, and you're like, oh, I wish that guy was doing like this part of the storyline. I felt like that with um, I really wanted John Cassidy to just be the go to guy, I don't but know, but opinion is the man. Opinion is good. Yeah. He, you know what? He might be up there too from the top three. Okay, I think he was my big big artist last year on Kenny. Uh, yeah, he was. I remember that. Um, all right, so. Let's do a couple real quick yeah. ones before we wrap it up, and then we'll do, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Walking Dead. Yeah, I guess. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, best DC book we both had Batman. Yeah, I was really trying hard to figure out what else was out there that would really was awesome in DC. I said Wonder Woman also. Yeah, yeah. I'm be- I'm very behind on Wonder Woman. But... Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman is definitely one of the most surprising mm-hmm. books. And I've I pitch it the same way to everyone. It's basically the the DC equivalent of uh, a DC universe real time Sandman in the okay like what Loki did for Journey to Mystery in terms of being that really off kilter mm-hmm. book uh, it's Sandman with more violence it's so so interesting the art team is incredible the writing team delivers the fact you have Orion running around with one woman in leg like, with great Greek mythology the God of War the whole night mm-hmm. incredible story um I I really got to catch but up Batman's on that. been tremendous like. That, it's 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 that's a marquee book goes without saying yeah that like his snyder's run is going to go down as like it's it's such a perfect um follow-up to morrison's run too because you have two back-to-back amazing super solid runs on batman that are going to run for like a long time like like what are we like 10 years maybe for from uh, like morrison, morrison to now wrote, morrison wrote for about 10 years yeah um insane uh biggest surprise read i had satellite sam because i love that book i suggest everybody to pick it up it also brought me around to howard chaykin big time because i like chaykin i was never like a huge fan but this book just works um the wake i agree with you on that wake is crazy um this is the biggest surprise read heck yeah heck was incredible uh i I recommend anyone pick up double cannon Mm -hmm. uh double barrel by Xander cannon um his story heck is about a dude who inherits his father's business Mm -hmm. Because he has a hell hole inside of his basement. People who want to find a secret from a dead a dead relative, he travels to hell with his disfigured partner to 
recover an ex girlfriend's ex boyfriend's body from hell. It's incredible. I got I got to check that out. So I, great. I, it, it, it fell by the way it's had for me and East to West. East too. to West is incredible. Fantastic book. That book surprised the shit out of me just mm-hmm. for the fact that I had no idea it was coming out. I had no idea Hickman was putting out a book like mm-hmm. that. I've said it before. If you have four horse in the book, I will consider it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that book does such a tremendous job of creating, of doing world building, and keep me interested. Um, Hickman again, man, and honorable mention, Manhattan Projects, one of the one of the best. I was books, yeah. I was thinking about that the whole time that I didn't include Manhattan uh-huh. Projects. That book became a book that I never expected to uh, be where it is right now. Yeah, um, I completely agree with that. Um, best image book. We both had Walking Dead. I couldn't think of another book that was better than. Um, I think it's because it's tenured at this point where it's like, you know what, like, like Chew is good, Invincible is good, but Walking Dead is because there's so much focus on it, like it, it has to be the best book, which I feel like we kind of both fell into that and thing. Only, the only thing I was thinking of was uh, was Invincible just because of the longevity. Like, yeah. There's nothing that has the continuity of a book like The Walking Dead, mm-hmm. and that kind of like Spawn or any other stuff. Spawn. Spawn. Still come out? Uh, I think so. Okay. Uh, but like Walk, Walking Dead is like, I, have, I, I did not watch the rest of the season. Um, which I still got to catch up on it because I hear it got like kind of yeah, good really again. Good. Right. Um, but the book is interesting. How do you feel the book is doing as far as like keeping your interest like held tremendously? Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm completely invest- invested mm-hmm. in the uh, in the story. That, that that is usually my first read when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Are you as invested, I, or are you a little burnt out? I'm not. I'm not burnt out. I'm again. I'm kind of like I know it's smoldering at this point. Um, but I want a little more meat. You know, like the last issue, the la- I feel like the last couple of issues weren't filler because he doesn't really do filler issues, but I could have done with like a little bit extra, you know, I'm okay with it. like I'm missing, I'm missing those last pages, you know, and for some reason, like I know I should have reacted better to the new issues ending of, um, this one, this right issue. where like Negan fakes them out. I thought it was fantastic. And I thought it was awesome too, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? Like it's, it's, it's the same full frontal governor assault. But and, that's why it's an ode know, to that, though. Yeah. They, I mean, they aped the shot of Negan arriving, mm-hmm. like how he arrived on the tank, you know, right. kill everyone type of thing. But I think it, what kind of hurts it also is that because it's out of the six issue structure that we're talking about over a year, mm-hmm. that you know there's going to be some stuff that's going to be taking a little bit longer to go from. So right. I think that you just know you're in for the ride and you just kind of want to pay off at this point. I also think the uh, the tiger's coming back. I hope so. Tiger's Bobby, Bobby really wants the, the Tiger to come back. I was talking to Bobby today about how much he hates Iron Man 3. I know. Um, he was I, happy that he convinced you that you didn't like it. I watched, uh, you know what I did? I, I showed him the... Um, the uh, things wrong with the right. Iron Man. I, yeah. I showed him that, and then I watched it too yeah. as I sent it to yeah, him, right. and I was like, you know what you're absolutely right about this does, movie. That guy does it for everything, even movies mm-hmm. I enjoy too, That yeah. you know, and I agree with stuff that he says, but you know, it's still, I still enjoy that movie. I think it's one of the wackiest. It is the it's wackiest wacky. Iron, um, Marvel movie they made. I uh, I still disagree with Bobby about Batman, though. Oh, absolutely. Love Batman. I was Sorry, Bobby. Bobby. All right, well, on that note, this has been the first episode of 2014 from Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolian. And I'm the animal.